How's it going guys? It is 2.38 a.m. 13th of February, Monday here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for pathology for step one, pass level vignette. Slightly more challenging answer choices. Nothing dramatic, not going to be lengthy clip cut to the chase. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-A-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 43-year-old man, he has a thyroid nodule palpate on physical exam. Serum TSH and serum calcium are both within the normal range. Ultrasound guide biopsy of the mass shows us a very buzzy apple green birefringence with Congo red stain, which is past level for medullary or medullary thyroid carcinoma. Okay, so so far nothing dramatic. Let's just whip through the answer choice here. We'll go backwards. What's most likely to be seen in this patient? Choice of uric acid, urolithiasis, wrong fucking answer. Urolithiasis, broad umbrella term, that refers to both nephro as well as ureterolithiasis. So calcium's within the normal range. Of course, medullary thyroid carcinoma could be part of the MEN2A constellation where we get parathyroid adenoma or diffuse foregland hyperplasia. But once again, we have normocalcemia here, in addition to the fact that our urolithiasis answer choice doesn't even say calcium, it says uric acid, no relation to this diagnosis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, some of these wrong answers. Students get hysterical about this pathologic descriptor as though it's high yield when it's not. Does it show up on NBME exams? Yeah, it does, but it's not high yield. So we can see these lamellated ring-like calcium deposits in papillary, papillary thyroid carcinoma, mesothelioma, meningioma, serous adenocarcinoma of the ovary. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased bone turnover, wrong answer. So this could be correct if we had hyperparathyroidism here, which we don't because our serum calcium is not elevated. And also very generic answer choice uh, tangentially for Paget disease of bone, where you have mixed osteoclastic blastic activity, isolated increase in serum ALP, but they like this descriptor nevertheless as an answer choice. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased serum phosphate, wrong answer. So once again, we do not have primary hyperparathyroidism here. If we had increased serum calcium, okay, then that could be paired with decreased serum phosphate accordingly. Wrong fucking answer. Choice A, decreased osteoclastic activity. Correct answer. And the reason is because you need to know that for whatever fucking reason, in medullary thyroid carcinoma, serum calcitonin is increased. Okay, so NBME question, I've seen them right. There is parafollicular C cell hyperplasia visualized. I've seen that written within an NBME question. And of course, the parafollicular C cells of the thyroid produce calcitonin. So calcitonin's mechanism of action endogenously is to inhibit osteoclasts. Students often erroneously think that calcitonin is the opposite of PTH. It's not. Of course, PTH is going to activate osteoblasts, which will express rank L, bind to rank receptor and osteoclasts, causing bone resorption, which will cause calcium leaching from the bone into the blood, increased serum calcium. But calcitonin does not do the opposite. It does not pull calcium out of the blood and put it back into the bone. By, by merely inhibiting osteoclasts, it just simply caps off the amount of calcium that's already in the blood. That's what calcitonin does. So USMLE really wants you to know that. And in addition, they want you to know that bisphosphonates exogenously, such pharmacologically, also inhibit osteoclasts. Okay, alendronate, pamidronate, third-line treatment, alendronate for osteoporosis, weight bearing exercise first, long walks is correct over swimming, calcium vitamin D2, and then as number two, and number three is going to be alendronate. Bisphosphonates, uh, pamidronate is used for hypercalcemia after normal saline. Bisphosphonates can be used in patients on family medicine in particular who are on uh, indefinite corticosteroids to prevent osteoporosis. So that's your take home here. Past level, you need to know amyloidosis. I probably should have mentioned that, huh? So amyloidosis is the actual staining that's occurring here. This is bi this uh, apple green biofringence congress stain. It's, it's amyloidosis, amyloid. It just means protein, okay? And this similar uh, staining can be seen tangentially in multiple myeloma uh, in both renal amyloidosis and cardiac amyloidosis. Okay, so 
Uh, any staining of amyloid in theory, you can get this apple green birefringence. You know the deal to make more content if you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.